and slowly open the eyes. And now I'm reading the book again. Why walk if you can fly? And reading it, I have a doubt for something that you explain about, about praise. How do you receive this system, these words? Because I feel nice when I say it, when I repeat. Suddenly I'm, I'm crying and I think a facet and it's magic. But how did you receive? You know, praise, love and gratitude is the vibration of the universe and unconditional love and unity is a consequence. It's just simple appreciation which leads to gratitude, which allows the love to grow and creates unity. They're all universal truths. You know, the humans think there's something wrong. We have this idea there's something wrong. But everything's unfolding perfectly. It's just about our focus. Are we focused on heaven or hell? We can choose in each moment. And the facets are just a choice. A choice for the highest vibration. And unfortunately, we've always been focusing on fear. The thing is, until we can cultivate silence or consciousness, the mind is always looking for a problem. The mind likes to be agitated, it likes to be worried, it likes to be in fear. It's addicted to it. But when we start to cultivate consciousness, just simply by using the facets to cut that habit and focus on reality, the peace starts to come. And then the mind starts to look for the peace. It starts to look for the peace. It starts to break the addiction of always looking for the drama. Because in each moment, there's nothing wrong. It's just a perception, a projection, an idea, an expectation that takes us out of this perfect moment. And when I talk about perfection, I'm talking about perfection and evolution. Because perfection keeps evolving. It's not fixed. People think that perfection is something you attain and then there's nothing else. But it's not true. It evolves. It creates. It becomes more and more and more and more. So I focus on the perfection of now, the perfection of my human experience, and then there becomes more and more perfection. Nothing is fixed. Not even death. It's not fixed. It's a human concept. Everything is evolving perfectly. It's our judgment that separates us from that. That's why it's so hard for us to appreciate, give gratitude, because we're focused on fear. So the facets start to cut that automatically. You know, people say to me, oh, I don't feel anything. Good. It doesn't matter. Bit by bit you're breaking that addiction. And you stop wanting it. It's like your addiction to sugar. You know, when you stop taking sugar, you're like, <laughs> you're like a, a piranha, you know. You want sugar from anywhere. And then bit by bit by bit by bit by bit until you have actually a rejection towards it or alcohol, or anything that's addictive that we do. And one of our greatest addictions is to suffer 
We love to suffer. We love the friction. We love the drama. Why? Because it's almost impossible for us to be still, to enjoy our lives, to enjoy the moment. That's why we consume so much. That's why the iPhone's like God. It's como Dios, no? It has our attention all the time. Because it entertains the mind. But we have to go beyond the mind. We have to find something that's in harmony with everything. That's present with everything. That's not isolated or separated into an image. But it's open for everything. And that comes from losing the addiction to preoccupation. The worry, the fear, the anxiety. When we start to be here, we start to focus on praise, love and gratitude. We start to vibrate in praise, love and gratitude. It's the doorway to everything. Sunday was my birthday. And it was a super special day. Because unifying in the morning, I was able to choose consciously to open to all what I was going to receive that day. And I let go of all expectations. Really, it was like beyond me, any expectation I could have. And it was, I was so open to receive the next day, I felt, I, I felt overwhelmed. And when I was able to connect with that emotion, I felt fear. And the fear I felt was related to the fear of the greatness, of to be big, to be so open to all the greatness. And can you talk to me about that, how to move through that, that fear and be able to embrace it? You know, it's just a habit of the mind, not deserving. But as you create more consciousness, those circles start to leave. So you just have to open. You have to have the intent to open. You won't always open. But you have that intention. But as the stress leaves, as the separations leave, as the judgments with yourself leave, you just open naturally. You know, you have to find love. Love inside. That's the key. The love is the key. Because love is silent. It vibrates. It holds everything. It creates unity. The love is the secret. That's why we're focused in the heart chakra. Opening the heart chakra, opening to give, opening to receive, opening to unite. And that's why all of the first portal, or apart from the last facet, it's always here, 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 here. This is a tantric system. It's a feminine system. It's open. It's embracing. It's saying yes to everything. It's nurturing everything. And it's allowing everything to move through. So how does everything move through? By the heart being open. And the facets are doing that. And you're having moments of that. And it doesn't have an external image. It's just you being loving with you. It doesn't have a certain behaviour. It's just you being loving with you. It's the only thing that's important. When I'm loving with myself, I'm open. And I keep opening. This. Hmm? I'm very intense. With everything I do and everything I give, and with a sis I saw that I abandoned myself a lot. And using the system, we are working this thing 
of all the love that I want to give outside to give it to myself. It confuses me still. That's why I want you to talk a little bit more about that. How to give to myself love when I want to give outside too, without abandonment, without abandoning okay. yourself. So firstly, there's no limit to love. And it's just about clarity. If you feel no, you have to bring that energy in. Because the head will say, oh, but you should. Oh, if you're a good person. Like they're classic abandonment things. And if you know you are that person, if you've studied that, and you're very clear that this is di your diagnosis, you need to stop doing it. And sometimes you have to go on the other extreme to come back to the middle. Okay, you have to find a middle path. But you feel it energetically because it's your first thought. It either comes like this to give or no. And sometimes it won't come. And if you're a natural giver and you have a no, then your head will start, oh, but you know, it won't hurt, you could do it. Da, 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 da. But that will start to create a weird energy. So as you start healing and loving yourself, it'll be very clear for you. Yes or no? Give or not? Do as you want or abandon yourself for others. And you're thinking, oh, I'm going to become selfish. But it's not true. People that are like that never become selfish. And because you have so much love and you're turning it back in, in some moment it will be unlimited and there won't be the abandonment. You'll just be doing it naturally because it'll be coming from a place of abundance. You know, I can give eternally, but I can say no too. I don't get manipulated. People don't convince me. It either comes or it doesn't. Before, I would abandon myself everywhere because I was begging for love. And remember that word. Because if you're a powerful person, the last thing you want to think is I'm begging for love. It's like pathetic, huh? And remember that. Am I begging for love? And if that's the case, give it to yourself. Always give it to you. Hmm? And other people that never give anything have to learn to give. We have to find a centre, not one extreme or the other, but just consciousness, and it's always here. It's always here. Hmm? He says, lately, everything annoys me. I don't tolerate the people I live with, and I get angry of my own shadow. How can I change my temperament and loving more myself? As I am, so I'm not fighting with everyone. You sure it's for someone else? <laughs> <laughs> I have a really good friend. <laughs> and my friend has a problem. And she asked me to ask. <laughs> this external upset is a protection. It's a place where you want to separate. And you have to go in and you have to find that place and give love to that place. And usually that comes from resentment or abandonment. Like this situation, I give, 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 give and I'm sick of it. I'm exhausted. I don't want to give to anyone else. I don't get anything in return. I am a victim. 
I want to remove myself from humanity. And I'm angry. Con la vida. And what do you do? You have to go in. You have to heal. But you have to embrace that. You can't make it wrong. We have to love every aspect of ourselves. Because if we love it, it transforms. If we negate it, it becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. Obviously, we don't want to live angry and resented. That's not a way to live. But in order for that to evolve, you have to embrace it and love it and say, okay, now I'm going to evolve beyond this. So how do I evolve beyond that? I have to move the crude emotion. I have to move it. That's why this system is so effective. It's a feeling system. It's a tantric system. I have to feel everything. And I have to allow it to move through. So it transforms into something sweet. It's very simple. If I see something, I have to love it. If I love it, I go into it. I find the root, I feel it, and I allow it to leave. Without judgment. Without judgment. And then it leaves. If I'm living in the past, I'll never be in peace. Because I'll always be projecting it forward. If I'm empty, I'm vibrating in love. And I'm living in the present moment. What's wrong in the present moment? Praise, love and gratitude. That's all that's ever present in the moment. There's not that constant movement. There's calm. I feel a little bit lacking what I live. Financially, of 10 houses, I did, and I have another one, but I feel I don't have anything. I feel lacking. And even I said, maybe when I will have a, a beautiful car, I bought a Mercedes and I continue feeling the same. So I said, I don't know what else I'm missing. I'm, I like to be here, I feel calm, I feel at peace. But I'm counting the days to go to work. And I feel I have nothing. I don't have anything. I feel very lucky. And you're counting the days to go to work. Yeah. Even if I'm here, I feel peace and calm because I have tranquility. But yes, I'm counting days. Okay, sit down. I'm going to fix you. <laughs> Firstly, I want to know what Mercedes you bought. A what? 200. Well, you should have bought the 350. You would have been much happier. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why are you desperate to go back to work? Because you have trouble being with you. You say, I'm in peace. But you're not in peace. You're not in joy. Because if you were 100%, you wouldn't be desperate to go back. So firstly, that's not correct. And you know it doesn't matter what you do, how much you get, you don't feel complete. Because there's an emptiness, no? It's just one house, another house, another house, another problem, a new car, new TV, new partner, new whatever. I've been there completely. But why will you not surrender to the moment? 
because you have fear and you want to go back to what you know even though it's not bringing you completion and you have to go beyond that that space of the mind where you're controlling everything and go deep into that dissatisfaction that place where you're not loving yourself where you're trying to go back run back to something that you know that makes you feel secure to connect with that fear because if you have everything and you love your work all you have to do now is love you and then the circle closes and you'll enjoy everything but you haven't gone deep enough. When I first came, <coughs> you were the person that got all my attention because I saw you so sad. Of all the people in this room, you were the sad one. You won. But you have to go into that sadness. You can't. Why are you sad? Have you got a list of things? Or one specific thing? Oh, well, you, you, you have to give time to heal. But even now, you've got your feet in two boats. Okay? And you've got to be in one boat. You've got to be here completely and the same dedication you give externally to be so successful financially or, yeah, you need to, that focus internally for at least the next 10 days or until we leave because you deserve that. You know, you have to find a balance. Mm. Can you talk a bit about relationship in between being an enlightened being and the part of suffering or lost that so many enlightened teachers had? You told us the story how you lost everything, oh, your before. family. before. Ah, okay. I'm like... Yes, before being. <laughs> like that relationship. Buddha has the same story of suffering, of luck, of going through a bad time. So which is the relationship of going through those things and enlightenment, achieving enlightenment? Well, you know, firstly, you don't need that. You don't need that extreme experience. I created an extreme experience. He created an extreme experience because he had the exact opposite. He was a prince. Same with Mahavira. Uh, he was a prince. They had everything and they went completely in the opposite direction into suffering, physical abuse, but that they created that on purpose. What happened to me, I created it, but it wasn't something I was trying to do. It's something that happened. And everyone gets to a point in their lives where there's a knock on the door. But it doesn't have to be so severe. And if you think of the Buddha, he realized that. And it's the moment he realized that, that he woke up. He'd gone to the two extremes. And Jesus too. The extreme that Jesus experienced before enlightenment is the same situation. Betrayal, abandonment, everything. But it doesn't have to be that extreme. 
It doesn't have to be like that. Most people that are very intuitive, very spiritual, are hypersensitive. So they have strong experiences. You know, some people are completely shut down to reality, to themselves, and they just mechanically go through life. And they don't even question, am I happy? Who am I? Where did I come from? Where am I going? Why am I here? They don't even ask those questions. They just get in the subway, go to work, do their work, come home, go to the pub, drink a beer, watch the football, go home. You know, but other people are more inquiring. And those people have a sensibility and they tend to suffer more because they see things. But it's not related. It doesn't have to be that extreme. It doesn't have to be that extreme. And lots of young people now are starting to see. You know, I don't have to torture myself and then give up and go to the Himalayas and get enlightened. I can become consciousness in action. And then some people make the highest choice and they become disciples for enlightenment. And that's of the heart. That's love. That's a surrender completely to consciousness. To consciousness. And that's not a path of suffering. It's a path of letting go. It's the next path beyond love. Like a deep love. It's the next path. And that's to unity with God. A question. A few days ago, somebody asked you the difference in between sex for need and sex for, the in the for love, intimacy. And you explained the difference very clearly. So my question is, which one is the path? What should cultivate? How to get the sweeter to go beyond the need towards sex for intimacy. Which one is the path? You know, I think when your heart's open and you're profoundly connecting with someone, it's a natural byproduct because you want to give to that person. If you're just focused on sex, you have a fantasy in your head and you're taking from that person. They're fulfilling your fantasy. You're taking what you want. And even when you're giving to them, it's to prove that you're good. That's not intimacy. Intimacy is a unity. When you really love someone, you unite with them in sex. It's almost a spiritual experience. Because that person is you and you're giving to that person. So I think you need to take a step back and look at the place where you're open to be vulnerable because that's extreme vulnerability. That surrender is extreme vulnerability and this is what you have to find. That fearlessness to connect so deeply with someone that you can unite with them. And people that are very much in love do that. It's like a melting. Hmm? But it starts with you, that intimacy, that fearlessness, that giving completely so that there's a unity. Hmm? I'm an expert, huh? 
Sex is my thing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. In the morning in the witnessing, happened some weird thing. I was thinking all the steps that you were guiding, and suddenly it shows up the image of death. That's because you're Mexican. Eso porque eres mexicana. <laughs> I, 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 I just moved my eyes and I closed them again. And again, I saw the image. So I said, no, 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 that's not good, that's not good. And I started to feel as if I'm diving in and I see the image again. But I concentrated more and then I felt I was going deep. First, I didn't give importance because I didn't even say. But I had been having some sensation weird inside, so I wanted to ask you if it's good, it's bad, or what. You know, everything's bueno. Everything's bueno. And that's part of life. But this specific image was the death of your ego, Christy as you fall into the well of consciousness. Yeah? Do you like that? <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> you know, the thing's this. When we start to go really deep and heal, our central nervous system recreates lots of different images. But if it's something that you're meant to really understand, it will be very clear. But it's not a negative thing. I mean, look, you guys celebrate death. You know, it's a positive thing. Death's part of life. It's a part of the cycle, the eternal cycle, the cycle that goes on forever. And you have to embrace that to really enjoy life. So it's a good thing. Don't worry about it. Yesterday I talked with my son and it was a very short talk because he was uh, with video games. Uh, and so at the end I said to him that I love him. I, I love you. I don't. Es porque es trece. But it was funny because he's very nice with me. He's very nice with me. And in these days, I was moving stress and going to express <coughs> about guilt that ah. I have. And that love that he reflects and that I feel with my son, with my daughter, it went towards my parents also, and I felt so much love towards my father. I felt him like a, a brother with a lot of trust. With my mom also, I saw that I couldn't change her. I love her as she is, with everything and all the, all the shoes that she threw me. I love her. And now I'm loving everyone, but especially not feeling the need of having to be loved, that tell me you love me, tell me you love me, or I'm here very, very perfectly attached, no? My question is, why did this happen, of not feeling any more the attachment? Because you're giving love to you, <coughs> and you're starting to open, and you're starting to experience the nature of love. You know, children live like that. And it should be like that. It should be that innocence without judgment. You've come back to that. And it will get bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's a beautiful way to be. And it happened quickly, no? Hmm? Because it wasn't the case seven days ago. Yeah? You're talking about your mother like, 
Great. Super. Beautiful. Come visit our webpage for books, movies, and our wonderful retreat centers. Isha's simple yet powerful system is transforming lives around the world. <laughs>